It's time we turned our eyes to the skies once more, folks, as many new faces on the channel have been asking the what's, where's, why's, and how's of many things, and although we may have covered these things before, I have come to realize that one, these folks are new, so perhaps they haven't actually seen these particular videos yet, and two, that the information that they may be after are kind of just buried in the videos that are not specifically about what they're after. So, the solution is bloody simple. Make a video specifically about it. Let's do it. And the whole look to the skies part is literal, as we actually need to head into either our rocky lands or mosaic biomes in order to witness a meteor shower. These high flying moon rocks are quite dangerous though. If they bonk on the noggin, they're dealing 50 damage, so be careful there. And do note that meteor fields and meteor showers themselves move and grow over time. So if you do happen to be planning bases around these biomes, plan accordingly. However, what we are after today is is this, the one of a kind of hunk of junk, the round meteor. And in it, there are some rocks, minerals, moon rock, but our biggest prize is something called the celestial orb. Magnificent. With the orb on the ground and with you in close proximity, it will allow access to the celestial tab. And while only two crafts may be shockingly low, there will be way more to it down the line. But quick note though, the orb can be seen on the map and act as a permanent location marker if you wish, or better yet, can be held by any player to mark their location at all times too, even while they're on the move. But let's talk the portal paraphernalia here first. And yes, it is a very simple craft. However, the real work comes after you craft this crap. For you see, toss one on the floored postern here and you'll soon discover that you've got some work to do. And we're gonna need a crap ton of moon rocks to get it done. Listen, don't let the pacing of this video fool you. For the most part, none of us are going to be able to take part in any of this celestial nonsense until far later in the game. Because not only are intact meteors not a guarantee from any dang meteor shower in our games, even still you're only getting that max 3 per boulder anyway. Not great. So, perhaps the Moonstone event is your best bet for some fast moon rock gathering. But even still, you not only need to have an ancient crafting recipe to even take part in this event, it can only occur during full moon. So yes, again, kind of out of reach for many of you out there. Oh, and your other option is to maybe find and sail to the Lunar Island to get some more moon rock, but the point still stands. It's gonna take you a while to get to these fun bits. Another quick mention here, because I'm sure some of you didn't even know these existed, and if you did, you just never knew how to make them socketed. You will first need to refine some moon rock into cratered moon rock and then place said cratered moon rock on the ground to then socket the desired gem. And in this case, that would be the purple gem. Easy peasy. But all right, after all of that eventually is done, go ahead and finish the craft to turn the florid postern into what is known as the celestial portal. Very cool stuff. And honestly, you can just expect it to work the exact same as the florid postern, but its specific functionality cannot be accessed unless we have craft number two of the celestial tab. And those would be these moon rock idols here. And they do have another simple craft of one purple gem and one moon rock and they allow us to switch characters at will by offering them to said celestial portal and don't fret you don't actually lose your inventory you just drop it you don't actually die so your day survived will remain the same including your map along the way and all your crafted recipes or pre-crafted recipes will be waiting for you as you return it is literally just switching your characters at all. And that is incredibly advantageous, actually. But now it's the good stuff, folks, as it's time we talk to the Celestial Altar on the Lunar Island. The problem is, we kinda have to build it first. Three pieces of the altar are somewhere in the lunar mine biome of the island underneath these things called inviting formations. So find them, mine them, and then first socket the celestial altar base in one of the celestial fissures all about you followed by the Celestial Altar Ore piece, which should look very familiar to you, and then top it all off with the Celestial Altar Idol.
metal itself. And boom, you have now constructed the Celestial Altar, folks. Let's talk the real Celestial tab now. The Moon Glass Axe is made from two twigs and three moon shards. No. Not moon rocks, but moon shards, and they are obtained through mining moon glass boulders on the island itself, or can just be found lying about in the lunar mine biomes. The axe has 80 uses as compared to a normal axe's 100. However, the moon glass variant is two and a half times more efficient overall. It will fell big trees in 6 hits compared to 15, medium trees in 4 over 10, and small trees in 2 swings as compared to the typical 5. Not bad at all. Great for toadstool. The glass cutter is next and is a mighty fine celestial weapon that requires 6 moon shards and 1 board to create. The razor sharp blade deals the same amount of damage as a dark sword without any of the sanity penalties that come from wielding one. So they are pretty darn spectacular. However, the cutters only have 75 uses total, while a dark sword has 100. But that being said, the glass cutter also has a very unique mechanic, in which it actually has 150 uses totals against nightmare creatures, and that includes the shadow pieces or even the ancient fuel weaver himself. Yeah, might not be able to tell from the footage I'm showing you, but trust me, it just uses less durability when you fight anything I just mentioned, and that's interesting. Salesman Beard got fired from his job the other day, so he ain't exactly here to give his full pitch. However, his words still ring true. Moon Crater Turf is absolutely lovely looking, and the craft will actually give more turf than usual, but it doesn't actually help the growth of any lunar flora at all, and that's kind of a shame, really. But ah, uh, yes, the bath bomb. You will be needing Loon Tree Blossoms for them, so be sure to find some lying around the lunar forest biome, or just obtain them through felling Loon Trees yourself. Bath bombs can be tossed into lunar hot springs to enable them to heat up immediately, which in turn will attract salamanders more often and thus proceed to ripen them very quickly. And a ripe salamander just equates to dragon fruit essentially, although you will have to do some salamander murdering to actually get it. However, their true purpose is made known under the glow of the moon, as on full moon night, a bath bomb could be tossed into a spring, which means moon glass galore. Five moon shards per bomb, plus a chance at red or blue gems. Absolutely marvelous. And I'm actually pretty sure you can have the bath bomb in the hot springs before the full moon even begins. And finally, the two sketches that can be crafted, then tossed into a potter's wheel, and then made into what you see here using cutstone, marble, or even that moon glass stuff itself. And they are all absolutely lovely. But there you have it, everyone. The celestial tab in all its lunar glory. And I really do hope to see you again one day as more stuff gets added to it as we've kind of just been with these same crafts for over a year now. But what we do have is still pretty darn neat, wouldn't you say? So thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Continue to prepare for celestial war. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.